We are kicking off celebrations for Black History Month today. One of the best parts of any culture is its food. Here to show us a dish that is not only steeped in culture, uh, but also has a historical significance is celebrity chef Chris De La Rosa. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. It smells phenomenal. Salted it's cod. <laughs> salted cod, which surprised me because mm -hmm. you said if you, someone was thinking of uh, an alternative perhaps to salted cod, you could th even think something like bacon. Or right? any sort of smoked Salt. turkey and stuff like that. Yeah. Anything with a sort of a salty element to it. It would give it a, a beautiful flavor. Beautiful flavor. Well, yeah. we're talking cod. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a bunch of unique ingredients, including something called a green fig, which I had never heard about before because it's not a fig at all. No, it is green bananas. And we have some over here if you wanted to take a look at it. And it's going to go into the dish soon. But what you want to do is when you go into a grocery store, you're asking for cooking bananas. Okay. In the Caribbean, we call it fig. Don't ask me why. And they work and they're delicious. A good yeah. starchy addition to this dish. Mm -hmm. Talk about the salted cod, uh, Chef Chris, and the uh, this si is, significance of it. This is how it would come. And um, it's very salty and it's very um, uh, dry. So you need to hydrate it. Okay. And what would happen is during the days of slavery and colonialism in the Caribbean, rum would make its way up north into the west, the eastern Canada. Uh, the rum would go there and the salted cod would come back down to feed the slaves. And that is how it, it became part of our culture. Okay. So we're going to go in here. Here we have some garlic, some onion, and the salted cod already prepared. Okay. We're going to go in with some bell peppers. Look at you and me, a good little Yeah, that's a tiny bit of salt because even though we hydrated it and everything, there's still quite a bit. We got some black pepper, quite a bit of salt in there. Right. We've got some, some tomato. And you're just keeping this on a medium heat? Medium uh, a medium low? low heat, just okay. to sort of sweat it down. And I'm just going to move over here. Right. And these, this is how you would basically pair it. You'd have that pot of water going. You would trim off the top and the bottom. And then okay. you would just go in maybe about two millimeters down one of the ridges. Okay. And put it in there to boil. And, uh, and does this help the skin loosen? Because I'm, I'm It will loosen. Green and what it, it cooks you. exactly. Yeah. The other thing I would recommend doing is, and we have some of the already cooked here, 20 minutes boiling. Okay. What my mom would usually do is get some vegetable oil and rub it all over your hands so this way it doesn't stain your fingers because there's a sap if you notice when i cut it here notice uh, that sort of yeah. shiny sap okay. it will stain your clothes so keep it away from your clothes now if you didn't have green bananas you can always use potato and all we would do here is stir that up and over here we have one of the completed dishes so maybe about five minutes after adding the cooked bananas in there okay we would move over here now and we how my dad would typically finish it off he loves olive oil. <laughs> he doesn't call it olive oil, he calls it sweet oil. Oh, and he would just drizzle a little bit of that olive oil all over it, and that's how you would finish it off. Now, if you didn't have the green banana, you can use cassava, you can use plantains, and over here we have some, um, some breadfruit. Breadfruit, Another, I, I'd never heard of this before, Chef Chris. Another significant ingredient in Caribbean cooking, and it came from all the way from, from the Pacific Islands, and if you saw Mutiny and the Bounty, this was part of the problem for Mutiny and the Bounty and um, Captain Bly. And the plants were coming over, so the plants came over from, from the Pacific Islands out there, grow the trees in the Caribbean to feed the slaves. And that's the whole connection with breadfruit. Okay. So, but it, it's got that starchy quality. Like you, you mentioned, a potato, uh, the green fig, the breadfruit, they all have that in common, that it fills you up. Yeah, and as I said, we didn't have potatoes, access to potatoes, so our starch element would have been the green fig or the green cooking bananas, mm. the breadfruit. Over here, we have cassava and plantain, sweet potatoes. So all these wonderful starchy products yeah. without being potato. I love it. I love that you were telling me yeah. in the break, Chef Chris, that this is something that would be eaten for breakfast because it, it, it fills you up for the rest of the day. Stick to your bones. Oh, I love it. Now, here's the thing, though. If I try doing that here in Canada because I sit at a computer all day, no, I'd go to sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What I like, though, is here I am. I'm the celebrity chef, and I got you doing all the cooking. <laughs> no, I like this. You're putting me to work. This smells so beautiful, so delicious, and I can't wait to dive into it. Thank you, Chef Chris, for being here. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. You know, you can check out the website on our, uh, pardon me, you can check out the recipe mm -hmm. on our website, yourmorning.ca.